Hey, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you found your way here, okay? Um, are you okay? Did you find your way here okay? Now is the time to also let you know that you may have been unknowingly participating in a study that I have been studying, that I've been, <laughs> that I've been doing for a year. Um, this video has been in the making for one whole entire year. I was gonna let the study run on a little bit longer, but I thought it would just be fun to do like one whole year of results running the files, checking the tests, cleaning the machines, oiling the gears, mixing the test tubes, burning my eyebrows with the Bunsen burners, until finally the results are out. And here are your favorite books. All right, so I have the machine here that has uh, done it all for us. It's given us the results. It is telling us what the top 20 favorite books of yours are. Uh, and that machine, it's... Uh, my MacBook. The sample size is by no means like a general randomized public. If you are in statistics, I'm so sorry, I probably just botched botched all the rules for creating a good statistic or creating a good questionnaire. Anyway, these results have all been compiled from you beautiful people who have sent me friend requests on Goodreads. And if you send me a friend request on Goodreads, my like question that you have to answer is what is your favorite book or your favorite books? I put it plural because I know you can't decide and neither can I. I then created a very advanced, top of the line, premium, streamline, Excel spreadsheet to keep track of all of the different books, how many people selected those books, what books they are, and then arrange those books by, of course, which are the most popular and which books people wrote as their favorite book to my question the most. In total, I did garner results from 1,268 people. The title says 1,000 because that just seems a little bit flashier and more compact, but 1,260, what did I say? 1,268 of you did participate in the study, so thank you so much. You may be shocked at the results. Um, most of these I have, most of them I've read. I think I haven't read about maybe f uh, either like four or six of the books on this list, but regardless, we're gonna go through all 20. I'm gonna pull up the results. We're gonna see what they are. And I just, I thought this was such an interesting video, honestly. I would love to do more like this and I would love to do more videos like including you guys and getting stuff that you want and stuff that you say and think about books and stuff like that. I think it's fascinating. So this was just one that I could kind of gradually compile like little grains of sand over a whole year. So without further ado, I guess let's just get into it. I guess I should give you some little other statistics as well. Of the 1,268 people I asked, we have 509 unique answers. So we have 509 different books. Of course, lots of people have voted in the top 20 books. There's lots of votes there, and I will tell you how many votes per each book were won, I suppose. So we're gonna start at the bottom of the list and we are going to count up to number one, whatever that may be. Um, I'm really excited, let's do it. Okay, so, all right, number 20 is The Bell Jar. <laughs> It is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I don't know if we're gonna do that little trick every time because it kind of freaks me out. Um, I don't wanna break plates. Okay, so The Bell Jar. This is 11 people's favorite book of those 1,268. Um, I can't say I'm surprised really. I did read The Bell Jar. I have read it. I read it in high school. I haven't read it since high school, so um, definitely do for a reread, but this book is extremely popular, extremely famous. It is about a girl named Esther Greenwood and her life, she's growing up, she's writing, she's dealing with a lot in her life. She is sent different places, she interacts with different people. The writing is incredibly hard hitting from what I remember and being so affected by it in high school. I have heard so many people adore Sylvia Plath's writing, what it makes them feel, the different ways that it accomplishes that feeling within them. And of course, following Esther's plight and her journey, and especially its analysis of the 1950s and its social attitudes towards female behavior and younger women in particular. It's an unflinching description of a young person's experience of emotional and psychological distress. So if you haven't read this book, 11 people suggest you do, and so do I. Ooh, yes, okay, let's start with chapter one. Maybe I'll read you the first sentence of each because um, I think that'll give you a good idea. And this one just, let me just read it. Chapter one, it was a queer, sultry summer, the summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs, and I didn't know what I was doing in New York. So, that is the bell jar. There it is, number one. All right, let's move on to number 19. Number 19 is 
Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This one is a little bit surprising to me, honestly. This one, I believe, also has 11 votes. Let me just double check. Yes, 11 people also listed this as their favorite book of all time, Norwegian Wood. This one I've also read in high school. I think actually like the first three on here or something I've read in high school and haven't read since. I remember enjoying Norwegian Wood. It's also an extremely haunting, extremely hard-hitting read. We're set in Japan and we are following this man named Toru and his two friends. There is a lot of trigger warnings for this book for sure from what I remember, so if you would like to read it please do your research on that because it was an extremely dense forest <laughs> on Norwegian Wood to get through, if you will, and there's so much in here about relationships. Um, we have Toru's friend who he is falling in love with, but they are both affected by the death of their other friend and by the man that she, Toru's friend, was in a relationship with in the past. And so you just follow these people and their lives and what's going on at the time. A magnificent blending of the music, the mood, and the ethos that was the 60s with the story of one college student's romantic coming of age. It brilliantly recaptures a young man's first hopeless and heroic love. And the first sentence of this one is... I was 37 then, strapped in my seat as the huge 747 plunged through dense cloud cover on approach to the Hamburg airport. Oh, you basically follow him as he dives into his memories. He takes a trip as he's taking a trip through the sky and goes back to the 60s and stuff like that. And Norwegian Wood is, of course, also a Beatles song. It's a great song. You should check it out. <laughs> if these were any of your favorite um, book picks, of course, the study was completely anonymous. I'm not going to out anyone that their favorite author is Dan Brown. Are you okay though? Please feel free to share in the comments if any of these were your favorite book of all time, why you love them so much, maybe why they weren't your favorite book of all time if you didn't pick these, and yeah, I think it'll just be fun to kind of find those people in the comments. So if this is you, or if any of these are you, thank you so much, and please let us know why, because I'm sure everyone else would be super interested in knowing um, as well. All right, number 18 on people's favorite books of all time is... We don't have sufficient data to compute this one, I guess. No, it's Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asaman. Um, I just don't have it. I'm really sorry. So there it is. Um, I have also read Call Me By Your Name. I read it in 2020, actually. I was not the biggest fan of this book at all. I think I gave it around like a generous three stars. This one just didn't work for me. And so I'm very much excited to hear why this one worked for you guys. 11 people also voted on Call Me By Your Name. So this is 11 people's favorite book. And I do really see the appeal. This is also a kind of, what I call it, tragic. It is a love story. Um, it's a story about relationships. We are set in Italy. Also, I forget what year, but sometime maybe it's the 1970s as well, honestly, or the 80s. And we're following this teenager and every summer him and his family, they get kind of an exchange student or someone who comes to live with them for a little bit. And so this summer, a man from America has come to stay with them. And so we follow the relationship between these two men over this one summer, pretty much. And subsequent events in their lives. A lot of people, I believe, just speaking from what I've heard, um, not so much from personal experience, they love the writing. They love, again, the hard-hittingness, the way that it pulls at your heartstrings, gets you right in the heart. Of course, the movie is probably beautiful. The trailer looks beautiful. I've yet to watch it, I know. Um, this one just, for a lot of reasons, didn't work for me, but I'm, I know so many people adore this. And Find Me, the sequel, was also listed on this list a few times, but not enough to get it up here. So we have Call Me By Your Name. Book number 17 on this list is also one I read, and that is... The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. So this one I also read in high school. There's definitely a trend here. I need to reread these because I would just appreciate them so much more now. Um, I adored The Night Circus when I read it. I know this one is quite polarizing, I believe. People either seem to really adore and love The Night Circus or really, really hate it, find it quite aimless, wandering, pointless, way too flowery for its own good. I honestly don't know which camp I would be on if I went back and read it now because like I said when I did read it, I adored it. The Night Circus is about a circus. It appears without warning. All of a sudden it's there when before it wasn't there. As you can imagine, this is an extremely magical book. Also at the heart of it, we have a competition between two magicians, Celia and Marco, who are being trained to battle each other. And essentially this night circus is kind of their battlefield. And there's a lot more going on. There's a lot of subplots in this book, which I remember really loving. Um, the writing is of course 
so descriptive so evolving with every single scene she just takes the utmost care and attention from what i remember to describe everything that you are seeing in this extremely magical world um for me i just remember it being such a cozy comforting favorite um, and of course there's also romance there's mystery there's intrigue there's a lot of suspense there's a lot of magicalness whimsicality of course so that is um the night circus and we bumped it up a little bit because 12 people listed the night circus as their favorite book which is really interesting and the first sentence of the night circus begins the circus arrives without warning so would highly recommend from what i remember um but i am due for a reread or maybe i'll listen to the audiobook because i think that would be quite the experience as well but that is the night circus number 16 is also 12 people's favorite book and that is okay well it's the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald um this one i completely understand honestly i was just flipping through this last night because i haven't read it for years again and just going through some of the pages seeing some of the sentences that were popping up absolutely um, incredible. This was required reading for me in high school, in um, my last year of high school, in my English class, and I did like it back then, but once again, if I return to it now, I would just be absolutely blown out of the water. Um, the Great Gatsby is about this man named Jay Gatsby, and he has recently come into a lot of money. We just had the war, and now he is throwing these parties with the sole intention of having a woman named Daisy attend one of these parties. Um, this is just such a beautiful world of the Jazz Age, and of everything that's going on at this point. The story of a fundamentally innocent man drawn to his own destruction through infatuation with a girl called Daisy, whose voice is full of money. Um, yeah, I would just really love to get my hands back on this. It's quite short. The first sentence begins, In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. So, um, yeah, this one I would just highly, highly recommend. Number 15 is a book I have not read, nor do I own, and that is... Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. <laughs> um, yes, so Rebecca is number 15, and for Rebecca, this is 13 people's favorite book, which is quite surprising to me. Like, I know people adore Daphne du Maurier. I'm someone who has never read Daphne du Maurier, which is very surprising because I think I would just absolutely adore her work. I know Rebecca is about this woman named Rebecca. Um, it was recently turned into a film, I believe, on Netflix, and it's about haunting, about relationships, about presence through absence, about relationships, about how other relationships haunt those new relationships, and just a really spine-chilling, I think, is it gothic, I believe, um, story that I am just dying to get my hands on. So if this was your favorite book, please uh, tell me why. I would love to know. And yeah, that is number 15. Number 14 has 14 votes for it. This is 14 people's favorite book from those I asked. I just want to ask, are you okay? If this is your favorite book, are you okay? Because that book is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. <laughs> if Crime and Punishment is your favorite book, wow, that's incredible. Um, I have read it. I've read Crime and Punishment last year in 2020. It was my first Dostoevsky. I think it was a great starting point for him, actually. It was super accessible, and I would very much like to read it again. If you are unfamiliar with this mammoth of a classic, super famous, super impressive. We are following this young, broke, very poor student named Raskolnikov, and he is meditating on crime and punishment, on who can commit crime, on ways and opportunities and times when it's more beneficial to commit a crime than maybe hold yourself back from it and under the guise of these meditations also under the guise of thinking himself superior and kind of above moral law because of the extreme poverty that he finds himself in he goes out commits a crime and the rest of the novel follows the waves and the consequences of this crime that raskolnikov has committed so this is one of the books that kind of like it just there were so many parts that really turned my stomach and put me in such um, kind of an anxious, fluttery mood. It definitely put a damper on my spirits for the whole like week that I was reading this. So um, yeah, just be aware of that, I guess, because Dostoevsky is miserable, <laughs> but I guess in the best way possible. So first sentence in chapter one is early one evening during an exceptional heat wave in the beginning of July, 
a young man walked out into the street from the closet-like room he rented on Stoliarni Place. Number 13 has 14 votes. Um, this one also surprised me, honestly, because it's 1984 by George Orwell. Once again, a book I haven't read and I don't own. Um, so many people have read 1984 and I know they just absolutely adore it, but I didn't think it was a book that like... I know so many people love it, but I just didn't think it was going to be so many people's favorite book of all time, which is why it surprised me so much. Um, 1984, Orwell's very famous dystopian about the year, 1984. And so much of society is just controlled. People are very misled. There's so much going on. There's very much totalitarian governments and regimes in place, and we just follow um, the consequences of that and what's going on in that society. So that's pretty much all I know about it. Um, the only Orwell I've ever- oh no, I've read Animal Farm. That's a lie. Animal Farm was actually pretty up here as well, but 1984 definitely took the cake. So 14 people, apparently you absolutely adore 1984 with your whole heart. Um, so I'm very much intrigued and looking forward to why. All right, number 12 also has 14 votes going for it. Um, in my humble opinion, I think this should be the top. I think this should be number one. Um, I think this should take the number one place, but- it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Number 12 is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. A round of applause, honestly. Um, this is the best book I've ever read in my life. I know I say that all the time, but like, honestly, if you go into it and you read it, I think, I hope you'll find out why. It is just incredible, breathtaking, show-stopping, phenomenal. Um, nothing better exists on earth honestly that i've yet to find so 100 years of solitude i really don't want to say anything about this book um i went in knowing next to nothing it was the best experience possible so super briefly we're just following the buendia family they live in the mythical town of macondo and around them things are changing they're not really changing there's a lot this book is a lot i do just want to say that um, you really have to commit to this book. You have to take your time with it, I think. It requires your utmost focus and attention and care because not only are there so many characters, a lot of them all share the same name or variations on the same name. Um, so that part's a little bit tricky, but I think once you get the hang of it and there is a family tree provided, which is super helpful and which I definitely returned to time and time again when I was reading it, but Marquez's writing his conception of time and history and people in Colombia is just out of this world. Um, it's gorgeous. And the first sentence of 100 Years of Solitude is just absolutely brilliant, but it is many years later when Colonel Aureliano Buendia faced the firing squad, he was to remember that distant afternoon when his father took him to discover ice. All right, number 11 is Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. Definitely have a big jump at this point because Little Women is 18 people's favorite book. 18 different people you adore Little Women. I've never read <laughs> Little Women nor have I read Louisa May Alcott, so um, from what I understand, it is just such a cozy, wonderful, comforting novel about sisters. Um, of course, we have the four March sisters and their different pursuits, what they want in life from painting to family to writing to music and stuff like that. And we just follow them as they go along their lives. Um, I have absolutely no idea of what Louisa May Alcott's writing is like, but I'm assuming it is gorgeous, very homely, very wonderful, very magical, probably in a very mundane sort of way, which is so needed uh, a lot of the time. So that is Little Woman. We are now in the top 10, and this is 19 people's favorite book, and it is The Song of Achilles. It's The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, I have read this one, and I do understand. It's definitely not a favorite of all time for me, but I can totally see why so many people just absolutely adore this book. This is a retelling of the Iliad and a reimagination um, of the Trojan War, mostly set through the eyes of Achilles and Patroclus, their relationship and what goes on for them. The writing is absolutely gorgeous. It is just phenomenal. I would highly, highly recommend this book. It is also heartbreaking. It is just, it's gorgeous, honestly. Honestly. Chapter one is my father was a king and the son of kings. Number nine now, we're really counting it down. This is 25 people's favorite book. Um, I'm quite surprised actually because, well, you'll see later, but it's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, this one I also totally understand. I think this is a beautiful, gorgeous, 
amazing book. Um, I do really understand that. I haven't read it in years as well, so I do need to come back to it again and finish it cover to cover, but um, like the back says, it's a novel of naked emotional power. It's a story of a defiant, fiercely intelligent woman who refuses to accept her appointed place in society and instead finds love on her own terms. There's just also so much more going on in this book. Of course, we have the gothic mystery, we have so much nature, the descriptions, um, so many different people, and just Charlotte Bronte's gorgeous, gorgeous writing. So, chapter one, there was no possibility of taking a walk that day. Coming in at number eight, what is number eight? This is also 25 people's favorite book. It's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, I haven't read this one, I know. It's been on my shelf for a really, really long time. I don't even know where I got this book from. I think maybe it was from my family, but um, I've never read it. But as you can imagine, it is a historical fiction about the Holocaust and about World War II and about Liesl who picks up a book uh, partially hidden in the snow which is her first act of book thievery, and so begins a love affair with books and words. Okay, so the first sentence is just, first the colors, and then it goes on, then the humans. That's usually how I see things, or at least how I try. Here is a small fact, you are going to die. So I really, really do need to get around to this. I'm not sure, should I listen to the audiobook? Because I think I could get my hands on a copy, but I'm not sure if this is one that um, I want to read myself or what, but regardless, definitely very high up on this list. And I was definitely expecting it, honestly. I know so many people adore this book, so that is The Book Thief. All right, number seven. It's Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I adore this book. I'm so glad it made it on here. Frankenstein is 27 people's favorite book. I don't think I really have to say too much about this. I think we all know pretty much the gist of this story, but if you haven't read it, honestly, I think this is a great excuse, a great time, a great sign to pick it up because it is just gorgeous. It is a really, really good book. There's so much there. Um, I last read this or yeah I last read this in uni because we were studying it and it was just phenomenal crazy wonderful brilliant <laughs> um I would die for Mary Shelley <laughs> um letter one you will rejoice to hear that no disaster has accompanied the commencement of an enterprise which you have regarded with such evil forebodings so there we go number six this one this one I'm not surprised about, but it's definitely not a book that would be kind of on my favorite shelf, which I think is really interesting and why like this list was so interesting as well, but it is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This book, everyone seems to love, love, love this book. Um, I read this a few years ago. Definitely need to read it again, but at the time, like I was very, there was just a lot of hype for me with it, I think, and it didn't really live up to what I wanted. Um, Donna Tartt's writing, some of it really captivated me, but the story in general, and also how long the secret history actually is, left me feeling a little bit bored, a little dry, a little meandering, um, but so many people adore this book. This is a book about, it's dark academia, it is the dark academia, but more than that, we're following this man named Richard, and he goes to a college in New England, yes, and he gets involved with this group of people. They're all only taking ancient Greek with their one teacher, Julian, and so Richard eventually gets swayed into doing the same thing, and then we follow the disastrous uh, accompaniments of too much hubris, too much arrogance, too much academia influencing people's lives, making them think they're superior, better than everyone else, and what follows these um, sentiments. The first sentence is, the snow in the mountains was melting, and Bunny had been dead for several weeks before we came to understand the gravity of our situation. The next one is a little bit surprising. We're now down to number five, and this book is 30 people's favorite book of all time, apparently. This is also, uh, I think, the last one on this list that I haven't read, but um, it is on my shelf, clearly, and I don't know, do you have any guesses? Like, I just wasn't really expecting it. I didn't think... I don't know. Here it is. It's A Little Life by Hanya Yanigahara. This is the book that everyone says just hurts so badly. It hurts like no other book before has hurted has hurt <laughs> or will ever hurt again. Um, I really don't know what's in store for me. I've kind of tried to avoid a lot of the discussion around this book because I think this is one that I want to know very little of before going into. What I do know is that we're following, I think, four college students, broke adrift and buoyed only by their friendship and ambition. And at the center of it all is a man named Jude. And I think he is who we're 
principally following, right? So we just follow kind of what goes on with them. I know this book deals with so much trauma. So many people have really kindly and really nicely told me to just be careful with this. And I would advise you to do the same because what I've heard of it so far, haven't stepped into it yet. Um, it can really be quite just a lot to take based on what I've heard. So that's all I know of it, but 30 people loved it enough to say it was their favorite book of all time, so it must be life-changing. The 11th apartment had only one closet, but it did have a sliding glass door that opened onto a small balcony from which she could see a man sitting across the way, outdoors, in only a t-shirt and shorts, even though it was October, smoking. This is the one that I'm like very happy is this high up, but I also didn't expect it. This is number four, and 31 people said this was their favorite book of all time, and like I do really agree. It's Wuthering Heights. I'm actually surprised that Wuthering Heights is above Jane Eyre. Um, that's not what I was expecting. I actually thought so many more people liked Jane Eyre than Wuthering Heights. But regardless, the Bronte sisters are definitely here to steal everyone's hearts. Um, I adore Wuthering Heights. I really, really, really do. I can't wait to reread it, annotate this copy, and just fall in love with it all over again. This is the story of Catherine and Heathcliff. I just love it. I just love it so much. The gothic, the atmosphere, the tragedy, the spookiness, the ghost, the heartache, the heartbreak. It's just gorgeous. Chapter one is 1801. I have just returned from a visit to my landlord the solitary neighbor that I shall be troubled with. We're down to the top three. These ones I kind of expected, kind of didn't. Regardless, number three has 41 votes for people's favorite book of all time. It's Harry Potter. Harry Potter. This is a book that I haven't picked up with my own hands in quite a long time. I have, of course, the whole series. They're kind of just at the top, top of my bookshelf right now. I think we're all going through quite a hard time grappling with our love for this series right now. However, it's it's impossible to deny the impact that the series has had on so many of us, especially in our formative years. 41 people, this is their favorite book, uh, probably the series in general as well, not just Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but it's been so long since I picked these back up. I think what I would really like to do um, the next time around when I get to reading them is really do kind of a deep dive. Um, and really like go into it and really see like kind of more what's there and try to like analyze Harry Potter as I would kind of a classic novel of literature and stuff like that. And I just think it would be really interesting, especially knowing now what we do and what we've known for a while about the author of this book, unfortunately. This takes the spot for number three. I'm really not surprised, honestly. Um, this book, of course, had such a huge effect on me as well as I was growing up. It has been a constant source of comfort, magic, strength honestly and it's just a lot of people's happy place so that is harry potter at number three all right number two <laughs> number two at uh 43 people this time voted for this it's pride and prejudice pride and prejudice by jane austen is 43 people's favorite book um this one i kind of understand it's not on my favorite shelf but like it is just one of probably it, well, the most beloved classic um, one of at least and I do really understand Jane Austen is again definitely falling into that category of coziness and comfort and happiness and a happy place and Pride and Prejudice I think well it's my favorite of Jane Austen's novels that I've read so I definitely understand and it's so funny quite quirky very lovely brilliant and the first sentence is of course it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a great fortune must be in want of a wife there is number two which leads us on to number one let me just really prepare this dramatic unveiling for you um number one people's favorite book from the survey 51 people have listed this as their favorite book 51 um which is quite surprising i i understand because this book is on my favorite shelf Okay, without further ado, let's just do it. Can I have a... Can you give me a drum roll? <laughs> it's The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is the top spot. This is number one um, with 51 people. Yeah, I definitely agree. This one is one of my favorite books of last year, one of my favorite books of all time, I think. This classic just honestly lives up to all the hype. Oscar Wilde just went places that um, I've never seen anyone else really go to before with their writing. I cried at this book because of how beautiful the language was. It was such um, 
oh my gosh, it was just such a wonder to see him work and to like see what he does in the picture of Dorian Gray. I highly recommend if you haven't had the opportunity to read this book in your life yet, I think honestly do yourself a favor right now and pick it up if you can because it is absolutely gorgeous, just wonderful. Chapter one, the studio was filled with the rich odor of roses. And when the light summer wind stirred amidst the trees of the garden, there came through the open door the heavy scent of the lilac or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering thorn. The whole book is like that. I promise you the whole book is like that. He just takes such care in every single sentence for beauty. <laughs> it is just gorgeous. The most beautiful book. Um, the most beautiful writing, I think, as well. And it's just gorgeous. So that is number one. And here it is. So thank you guys so much for participating in this study. Um, if any of these were your favorite books, definitely let me know if you made it onto the list, if they made it onto the list. I think this was super fun. I would love to do some more videos with the results because like I said, it did take a long time and I do have a lot of results. Um, like I said, there are 509 different books compiled in this poor Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> it's a mess, honestly. I hope this was super fun, super interesting. I'm gonna go wash my plate now. If you have any ideas of what you would like to see or what you would like me to do with the rest of the information, the rest of the data, um, please let me know because I would love any ideas. I hope you're doing so well and I hope you got some good book recommendations because these were your recommendations. I'll see you very soon in the next video. Ciao.